Hey, Juliana. Just giving you a heads up, I'm bringing a coworker home with me. Can you whip up some dinner and grab a few beers for us? Thanks. Oh, not again. I've already told you this. I need you to give me a heads up at least a day in advance. It's not a walk in the park to prepare a meal, you know? What do you expect me to do? We literally just decided on this earlier. If I had known in advance, I would have definitely told you. You can just make something quick, no big deal. That doesn't make it any easier. Anyway, there is nothing to cook because I was planning to go grocery shopping tomorrow. No worries, it'll take us about an hour to get home, so why don't you go shopping now? That way, you can grab some ingredients and we'll have everything we need for dinner. I'll handle my coworkers' arrival and make sure they're comfortable. Do you think I can magically go shopping and cook a meal in just an hour? Going to the store itself takes time, you know? And let's be real, no matter what I cook, it's going to take at least 30 minutes. I don't want to rush through it and end up with a half-baked dinner. How about you order takeout or grab something on your way home? Hold on, hold on. Don't tell me you actually expect me and my coworker to settle for fast food or something. That's just plain rude. Seriously. He's our guest, and we should serve him a proper meal that's hot and delicious. I don't want to end up looking like a total joke in front of Wayne. I didn't say anything like that. No need to say anything. It's already settled. Oh, and before you head out to shop, serve us an appetizer to go with our beers. We'll just snack on it while we wait. Meanwhile, you can finish up the shopping and cook the rest of our meal, right? So let's get moving. Chop, chop. No more time to waste. Wait, hold up. What do you mean by that? I am not your servant, am I? It feels like you always talk to me in this authoritative tone. Aren't we supposed to be equals in this relationship? I think it's only fair that we treat each other with respect and on an equal footing. That's what a healthy relationship should be about, don't you think? Why the hell are you so worked up? Just get your act together and get ready now. Suck it up, princess. Do you even realize who's the one busting their ass to put food on the table? Yeah, that's right. It's me. So quit complaining and start pulling your weight around here. We don't have time for your tantrums. Wow, you're just awful. Newsflash, you're not the king of this house. That whole mentality is so outdated and ridiculous. It's not about one person having all the power and making all the decisions. Marriage thrives on harmony, not a struggle for control. Oh, please, don't act all innocent now. You're just a full-time housewife, right, Juliana? Isn't your sole purpose to look after the damn house? Don't pretend like it's some noble duty. You chose that role, so own up to it. Yeah, I get it. But there's a line, you know? I'm not your servant, and I'm definitely not your mother. I know that, but the husband makes money, and the wife looks after the house. Those are the roles, aren't they? You're just having a relaxing time without taking your role seriously, Juliana. So you can't complain. Ugh. Whatever. I'm just exhausted from going back and forth with you, Daniel. Oh, believe me, I feel the same way. So are you going to make us dinner? I hope you won't turn me down, especially since I'm the breadwinner here, putting food on the table and all. I know, I know. You've made yourself clear. You just want me to make it, right? Yeah, that's right. You need to know what your role is as the wife. Yeah, sure. I'll make it. And which co-worker is coming today? Is there anything they don't like eating? It's Wayne. You know, that needlessly polite guy. He came to visit last month, remember? I think he said he'll eat anything, is that right? Yep, I checked with him just now and he said he'll eat whatever. Got it. It's okay if you do have a beer or two, but don't drink too much, please. Remember the promise you made me. You assured me that you'd be mindful of your alcohol intake and avoid getting wasted. Oh, here we go again. Yeah, I heard you the first time and you're such a pain. Always nagging and ruining my vibe. Seriously, you have a talent for killing the mood, don't you? I'm telling you now, but I'm serious. You can't tell me later that you don't remember. I know, but you don't need to tell me so many times. We'll start heading there now. We'll be expecting beers and dinner. Hey, is this Juliana's number? Yes, it's me. Sorry to text you around lunchtime, Juliana, but can I have a moment of your time, please? Just checking. This is my husband's coworker, Wayne. Last night was a little hectic. It slipped my mind that we exchanged numbers. Sorry, I know I asked for your number first. No, no, that's all right. Honestly, I wondered for a while if I should text you. So, what's up? Did Daniel do something at the office? No, he's working just fine as usual, so there's no need for you to worry. I just wanted to apologize about yesterday. I am so sorry about what happened. I feel a bit responsible. Huh? Why are you apologizing, Wayne? When Daniel hit you. Honestly, I couldn't believe he'd do that at all, let alone in front of me. I was in total shock. I'm sorry I couldn't stop him from drinking so much. 
Oh, you don't need to worry. He was the one who got violent with me, so it's his fault. As for the drinking, you didn't know how bad he gets, did you? Nothing is your fault. Yes, but you made such a nice meal for us even though I came over on such a short notice. Daniel said you already had dinner ready. I had no idea you had to get everything together so quickly. I feel guilty. You wouldn't have gone through any of that if I didn't come through. I admit I was a little bit shocked about dinner. I did my best to cook it, but Daniel knocked it all over the floor when he went crazy. I'm really sorry that we wasted your food. You've been apologizing too much. It's not your fault, Wayne, so don't worry. Thank you. And what happened with you and Daniel after that? I'm guessing you heard him? What he yelled at me after you closed the front door? Yes, that if you didn't clean it up by the time he got out of the shower, he'd divorce you. I couldn't believe that he said such a thing. Was everything okay after that? It's fine. We filed for divorce already. Huh? What do you mean? Yesterday was the first time something like that happened. I'm embarrassed to say that he often gets drunk and acts violently. So, I haven't been allowing him to drink alcohol at home recently. Not that it really mattered because he'd sometimes sneak booze into the house. Is that so? Yep. He's awful when he drinks. So I warned him that next time it happened, I divorce him. I prepared the divorce papers beforehand, which both had our signatures. Wow, you even went that far to prepare for a divorce. So, you must have been pretty serious about it. Why did Daniel do such a thing when he knew about that? I don't know. Maybe it means only I was serious about this. He signed the papers, but I guess he thought I'd never actually submit them. Or maybe he thought that a stay-at-home wife wouldn't willingly get divorced. No way! He thought you were bluffing? He had no regard for your well-being at all. I don't think he did, sadly. Well, what's done is done. You don't need to worry about it, Wayne. Um, I'm not sure if I should pry so much. But you said you got divorced, which means you submitted the divorce papers, didn't you? But by yourself? Yes, our divorce is in motion. You might think I'm a ruthless woman for not doing this without talking to him, but I've had enough. No, I don't think you're ruthless. I'm afraid to say this, but honestly, as far as I saw Daniel yesterday, I think that was the right decision. Really? You don't have to be polite. I'm not. This is my honest opinion. I respected Daniel as a manager at the workplace, but after I saw him yesterday, I see him totally different now. I had no idea he was that type of person. He maintains a good public image, but he's arrogant at home and proclaims himself the man of the house. He just uses me for his convenience, like a servant or something. If I disagree with him, he'll get upset and go on a rampage. So, like yesterday, that must be rough. Yes, just like that. When he's sober, he's always bragging about how much he earns, but when he drinks, it's terrible. His income doesn't make up for that. He wasn't like this in the past. Right. I think you made the right decision with the divorce, Juliana. Honestly, I think Daniel's insane. Sorry, I've done nothing but complain about him to you. It's a pretty depressing story, so just forget about it. After finding out how bad things were, listening to you was the least I can do for you. Well, if there's anything I can do to help, I would love to. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm not sure if there's anything you can do though, unfortunately. If you got divorced, you might need to move out. For example, or if Daniel gives you any trouble, God forbid. Anyway, if you need help, I'll be here for you. Thanks. But this is a problem between me and Daniel. If work gets out that you help me, it'd be pretty awkward for you at work, right? Even so, I can't just ignore this. Because my mother was also abused by my father in the past. So I can't stand that kind of thing. That's horrible. I might be getting overly emotional because of my own parents, but it's true that I want to support you. I couldn't help you yesterday, so please tell me if there's anything I can do for you. Then I'd like to ask you a favor. Can I get you to help me now? Huh? Now? Sure, that's okay. Then there's something I need you to do for me, Wayne. So here goes. Hey, Juliana, why's all your stuff gone from the house? And where even are you now? Don't tell me you went back to your parents' house. Oh, calm down, Daniel. 
Why are you in such a panic? This isn't like you at all. Wow, way to dodge the question, you imbecile. I'm asking what the heck's going on. When I came back, you and all your things were gone. You better spill the beans right now or prepare to face some serious consequences. Don't you remember what happened yesterday at all? Yesterday, I told you to clean up before I came back. And what do I find? A pigsty. Why haven't you done that? What's gotten into that stupid head of yours? Can't even follow a simple directive? Get your act together and clean up this mess before I lose my patience with you. I don't know what you're getting so worked up about, Daniel. You said it yourself. If I didn't clean up, we were getting a divorce, right? And as you wished, I just got divorced and left the house. Huh? Did you really submit the divorce papers? What the hell are you doing not discussing it first? You promised. The reason why we both signed the divorce papers was exactly for this sort of situation. So why do I have to be told off by you? How dare you talk to me like that? You think you can talk to me with such disrespect? Here's a little reality check for you. You're able to live the lazy life because I'm the one busting my ass to bring in the cash. So don't you dare spew your arrogant nonsense when you can't even fulfill your own responsibilities. Didn't you see what I just said? We aren't married anymore. So, your earnings are no longer my business. Anyway, to you, I'm your servant, not your wife. Aren't I? So you can stop pretending like we're a real married couple in the first place. Cut it out. I don't approve of this divorce. It can't be legal to accept a divorce that the husband didn't even agree to. But you signed the papers of your own free will, didn't you? Who was the one that said we should get divorced if I didn't clean up? Maybe you have amnesia. That's not what I intended. It was just a harmless little remark, you know? Like when you make a playful promise. I didn't mean it seriously at all. I never thought you'd actually go ahead and file for divorce. What you did is outrageous. But the fact is, you signed it. So, that's legally valid. Stop making a fuss now, even though you chose to sign it. I think it's a fair result after you didn't follow through on the promise you made. Forget about that stupid promise. I only signed it because you kept pestering me to do it. I can't believe a mere piece of paper is supposed to be the end of our marriage. You've got to be kidding me. I'm gonna make everything right again. I'm gonna stop the divorce. Whether you're happy about it or not, that piece of paper represents the legal end of our marriage. If you have a problem with the law, why don't you take it up with the government instead of complaining to me? All I can say is that no matter what you do now, it's all going to be futile in the end. Don't talk back to me. Talking to you like this is getting us nowhere. I bet you're hiding out at your parents' place, aren't you? Well, guess what? Just stay put because I'm coming to drag you back home. We're gonna have a long overdue conversation and sort this mess out once and for all. Hold up. Don't even think about showing up at my parents' place. Trust me, you'd only end up making a fool of yourself. Besides, I'm not even there, so it's a pointless endeavor. Just give up on this, Daniel. Well, if you won't tell me about your whereabouts, then I'll have no choice but to bother your parents. I don't care if it's embarrassing or not. I need to find you. So, if you don't want that, you better cough up your location right now. I can tell if you want, but I don't think you'll be able to see me because I'm under police protection right now. Huh? Police? What on earth are you talking about? Why did you go and get yourself mixed up with the police? Like I said, I'm under police protection. Oh, and let me tell you something. There's probably police also heading to you, so get ready to welcome them. What? Are you serious? Why are the cops coming because of a divorce? That doesn't make any sense at all to me. No, not that. The police are coming because they want to question you about what you did yesterday. What did I do yesterday? I didn't do anything that would get me arrested. Don't be ridiculous. You don't know? Whether you were drunk or not, against family or not, you'll be arrested if you lash out of violence. Have you lived all these years without being aware that domestic abuse is a crime? Listen, I have absolutely no clue what you're going on about. But even if your claims were true, you can't just arrest me without any evidence. This whole situation is turning into a ridiculous circus. What a complete waste of taxpayers' money. You had the nerve to call this a circus. You clown. Do you think it's okay to be violent and hurt people? And there's a witness who will testify that you did it. Wayne told them everything. They already investigated the crime scene while you were working, too. Wayne? So that's why he left the office early this morning? I was so good to him. You're saying he betrayed me? I can't believe it. He didn't betray you. It's just that he has some common sense. Well, you don't have any, that's all. No way. Does that mean I might get arrested? Looks like it. And of course, I have no intention of dropping the charges. Well, looks like you're on your own now. I've done my part, so 
It's up to you to figure everything out. And just so you know, yes, all of this is real and it's happening. In case you were wondering. Juliana, please forgive me. I really don't want to be arrested for something so small. If you ask me to stop drinking, I will. I'll treat you better from now on, too. Why? What's wrong with that? You might not get a servant like me, but you'll get three meals a day in prison. You can quit your drinking addiction, too. So everything's good, right? Well, anyway, this is my first offense, so I doubt I'd be imprisoned. Are you sure about that? Even if it's your first offense? You injured me. So there's a good chance that you'll be convicted of a felony. No way. Then what about my job? Will they find out? If I were in your shoes, I wouldn't be so worried about the job right now. However, if you want details, go ahead and ask the police. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to lend you their heirs. Just so we're clear, I'm not your wife or anything to you anymore. So don't you dare give me orders ever again. Following the incident, Daniel was taken into custody and subjected to questioning by the police. He stubbornly maintained that he had no memory of being violent toward me. However, the testimonies from Wayne and some neighbors, along with the physical evidence found at the house, painted a different picture. Daniel's defense was weak, to say the least. To make matters worse, he received a longer sentence due to an angry outburst in court and was subsequently fired from his job. Ultimately, Daniel was convicted of a misdemeanor rather than a felony, but it was evident that having a criminal record deeply troubled him. Once he was released, rumors circulated that he became a recluse, rarely leaving his home. In the meantime, his parents offered me a lump sum of compensation, enabling me to move to a new house and start fresh. In the aftermath of this ordeal, I found solace in regularly keeping in touch with Wayne. It's strange to say, but he feels like a new little brother to me. My terrible marriage with Daniel led me to believe that all men must be misogynistic. But Wayne's kindness served as a reminder that not all men are like that. Although now we live far apart, I genuinely wish him a happy life. A successful marriage hinges on mutual support, and I've come to understand the importance of maintaining that foundation. We all make vows when we enter into marriage. But sadly, some people forget the essence of those promises. Honestly, the thought of dating or marriage doesn't even cross my mind at the moment. However, if there is a next time, I hope to be with someone who values and prioritizes support as the cornerstone of the lasting partnership.